seeing Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne or Hugo Weaving doing the stunt. It just opens up a whole new world. When you see the guys falling down, those are the real actors falling down. So maybe it's, if it's just like a regular, just, so if that last left, so, yeah. you know, so if I just hold that one there, and if you went to throw the other one? You know, it was really up to us some days to ask everyone around us, Wu Ping's team and the American and Australian stunt teams, um, what we needed to do. You know, I, I had a real input into sometimes. Just classic pop. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And then that's like not working out for a while. <laughs> the first time the fights were choreographed and we learned them like, like dancers, like ballets, and they really, they didn't change. They hardly changed at all when we shot them. This time around, there were quite quite major changes made on the day while we were fighting, and we had to swing with that and uh, accept that, uh, well, now you weren't doing that, you were actually doing that, or there was a kick coming in or something, or you just cut out a, an element because that, that part of the fight was too long. Everyone, I think, because they had their own experience before, knew how they personally wanted to involve themselves in their training. It was pretty daunting, and I, um, but I was, I was actually just determined to, 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 to train hard and train well and, uh, and to get fit and not get injured. You've got a 20-pound sandbag on your back and someone's pushing you, looking to warm you up after two hours so that they can crack, basically trying to open up your ligaments here so you're going to split and then, you know, go, you ready? And then when you least expect, boom! <clears throat> And, and after they do that, you go, thank you. Thank you for making me cry, because now I can kick higher. I always say, Tiger, you kill me. <laughs> Never somebody treat me like this, push me so hard, make me cry every day. If you want to kick that high, you want to look good on movie, I say, you have to. It's good fun, but it's taxing. And I'm an old man, I'm 37 years old, you know? Very few times you get pushed to your actual ability. I think uh, Larry and Andy have done a, a pretty exceptional job of pushing uh, the martial arts on team pretty much to their ability. They don't stop till they get exactly what they want. Their whole thing is to push you that little bit farther, and as frustrating as it gets, it really brings the best out in everybody. For me, it's such a great opportunity to be able to be asked to do that. If it's easier for me to start in one spot and, and do a move, they'll go, oh, we'd like you to start in the action just behind where you have to do a 360 turn around and do it. Oh God, we did one little piece. We had like 78 takes, I think. And then went back the next day and did another 15. Uh, on just one very percussive piece of fight. And then when we got into the crater, we were fighting in the mud as well. So it was mud and rain and... But by that stage, the fight had become more like a flailing around, you know. No matter how good you think it is, you gotta go that extra notch. And we're talking like perfection, which is good. It pushes all of us, but uh, the Wachowski factor is definitely something to contend with. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Chad Zahelski has been such a great boon, I think, to this project. Uh, he developed a thing called the Twisty Belt. Yeah, yeah, sir! Allowed me to do backflips into cartwheels. We could do multi-directional rotations as opposed to being limited by a, a regular Hong Kong harness. You know, in this, you could twist and, and rotate. It's like a metal, it's a metal corset. Yeah, it feels quite comfortable, but I don't think you'd want to wear it for very long. Wire work, when you first see it, it seems easy, but it takes a lot of practice to get used to. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, and it takes time. Because whether or not the wire lifts you up or puts you down, you still need to be flexible, you still need to be able to kick, you still need to be able to punch, and you still need the strength to pull your body up in the positions that we need. Shot for shot, that's Keanu doing it. That's him getting his leg way up here, kicking the guys in the head. That's him flying up in the air, coming down with the, with the triple kicks and stuff. That's that's them. I'm trying to find the sky like no one's ever fought in the sky before. Action! Oh, okay. We've seen Good. some flight occur, but they wanted to see it in a way that we would assume would be the characters that have weight and they would move and they would feel like they were flying.
for the tuning forks were very interesting because of what Chad wanted to achieve were you could not do on wires. So we looked at all these Cirque du Soleil and special acrobatic type tapes uh, and there's equipment that they were using conceptually we saw connection or at least the martial arts guys and Chad and RA you know sort of borrowed from some you know basically circus methods. Uh, we took a like a gymnastic a trampoline uh, twisting belt or aerial squatting belt and uh, modified it to take the uh, the weight and stress load that the belts experience in these rigs and then uh, made it about twice as smooth and about ten times as strong and then used special adapters to plug into our single arm pitch forks. Chop. Bam. Good. Faster you get around the belt. 14 guys just to operate the tuning forks uh, and so you had to coordinate and choreograph and everyone had to be in tune and sync with each other because of the actors and the stunt guys actually coming in, fighting, spinning, rotating and the mass of those two units was quite extreme. They had to be very diligent and very careful because the impact of those, those two mechanisms was a very dangerous thing. The tuning forks are not comfortable at best. They're ugly, they hurt, especially the twisty belts. And they just tear on, they just tear on your hips, really, it's a lot of pain. We're just always in the harnesses and after like 18 hours, it kinda hurts most of the time. The guys get in them and they would go into what we called the cave. They would just get so far into pain and the pain would go away and they would just, you didn't really wanna talk to them. They would just look at you and they would acknowledge you and they knew what you, wanted, you asked them to do, but there wasn't any friendly socializing going on there. We tried to put the actors in for the as minimal amount of time as possible because it was not comfortable. We made a pack. When you got in them, you shot till you were done. So whenever you're flipping or twisting around to hit, look for him. Okay. And that keeps your eyes focused on something. That may hold off the, the nausea. The nausea. Uh, so what is the difference between this and the yak? Yeah. Well, on the yak rig, you yak. Again, another one of those torture deals. But this was a pole that the two gentlemen face each other and they could turn this way. The pole would allow them to turn this way and then they could turn the whole base this way. So you had three axes this one. Real unfriendly rig, hurt again in the hips, made you sick to your stomach. So it's like a really good carnival ride. And because there's two of us in it, it's a nice challenge to see who's gonna quit first. It became a game with them who was gonna wimp out first on them, but they didn't like it. You know, it was not good. They were good for about 10 or 15 rotations at a time. Then it was a lot of eyes rolling back in their heads and, you know, trying to see who was gonna keep their lunch down. Uh, it's called the yak rake for one reason. When it goes good, it feels good. When it doesn't go good, it doesn't feel good.